All right, Panasonic, you did it. You guys got me back. You guys got me back. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Cashed Out. And today I'm going to talk about the reasons why I left Canon and switched back to Panasonic with a Lumix S5 Mark II. Now, before we get into the reasons why I switched back, let me tell you a little bit of history in terms of the cameras that I've used. When I first started shooting, I started off with Nikon and then I switched over to Sony and then I switched over to Panasonic and then I went over to Canon. So I bounced around on almost every camera brand that you can think of. I don't think I ever shot Fuji. That's the only one that I didn't get my hands on, but I was just trying different camera brands just to see what I liked and what I didn't like. Now, once I got the feel for all the different brands, I really liked the images that I was getting out of my Panasonic cameras and they were awesome, awesome for photography. I really enjoyed them. The 4K video was good, but as I start to really dive in more in video, I noticed that the lack of autofocus, like lack of good autofocus in my Panasonic camera, it really just made it hard to be able to shoot the way that I wanted to shoot. So that's why I switched over to Canon and I stayed with Canon for a while. And I really like Canon colors, but the dual pixel autofocus was just so rock solid. It was hard to, to, to resist. It was kind of hard to say no. So I, in my heart, I always loved Panasonic. I had a great time with my Lumix camera. So I never really looked at them for video anymore because the S5 that they had beforehand, and I think even the S1, I believe, the autofocus just wasn't great it just wasn't good enough for me to consistently trust it but once they released this bad boy the s5 mark ii man total game changer for me because the s5 mark ii fixed the most glaring issue for me with the panasonic cameras and i'm sure you've heard other people talk about it and that's just the autofocus the phase detect autofocus system that they put into this thing is absolutely rock solid i've shot several events with this camera now and i absolutely love it i was just shooting a wedding show here this past weekend and it was rock solid caught on to the subject stayed on the subject and when I was switching from one subject to another the transition was very smooth I've noticed some even with my Canon camera when I was shooting with the R3 the transition from subject to subject was kind of jarring you know it's kind of hard that when especially on autofocus when you go from one subject to another it was just like boom it's just right there but with this Lumix with the S5 Mark II it has a really smooth drop off from subject to subject which is really nice very very, very nice. So I really love what they've done with the autofocus. And that was part of the, probably one of the biggest reasons for me. And there's two other reasons that really led me to leave Canon and come back to Panasonic with Lumix. But the autofocus was one of the sticky points where I was like, man, Canon's autofocus is just really good. But the, this autofocus that Lumix is putting out, it's very good. It's, it's very good. I'm actually very impressed with it. And I'm thankful that it's as good as the hype has claimed it to be. Because when I was doing, looking at the reviews, for it before I made the purchase, I was like, eh, you know, is, is it there? But after using it for both photography and video, yep, it, it's definitely there. It is definitely rock solid. So that's the first main reason why I switched over is that Lumix finally fixed their autofocus issue. And I absolutely am super excited about being able to, to jump on and use the S5 Mark II. The second reason why I switched from Canon to Panasonic with the Lumix cameras is that the cripple hammer from Canon is absolutely real when it comes to video. I feel like they do such a good job in terms of photography. On the photography side of things, I've never had any issues with their cameras. They've all been awesome for photography. But when it comes to video, it seems like they always like cut back on features or, you know, you wonder why they have like recording limits, why they, they constantly overheat. In order to get the good stuff, you either had to pay a premium. Like, you know, for me, I being a hybrid shooter, I had to pay the premium to go with the R3 because I knew that was one of the Canon cameras that didn't overheat heat at all. It didn't overheat and it gave me the ability to be able to shoot photos, shoot video, be able to switch seamlessly, not really have any lag time or any issues and really have no compromises. You know, that's the one thing that I was I was looking for is just a, a solid camera. It can do both photo and video very well and I don't have to compromise or, or have workarounds. With my R6, I shot that for a, for a little while and that was actually my B camera to my R3 and with the R6, there was the compromise because of the overheating and the recording limit. So in order to bypass that, I had to buy the Atomus Ninja to be able to record externally so that I can bypass the overheating and the recording limits. So it's one of those things for Canon when it comes to video is that in order to get the premium features, which you, I just feel like if you're if you're going to charge us two, three, four thousand dollars for cameras, they should just be 
awesome. They should have everything that we need in them. And I know for you guys that love Sony, Sony is great. Sony is absolutely great. They're, they're crushing it. But I'm just not a fan of the, the look of Sony cameras. Nothing against them. Like I said, I'm, it's just not doesn't fit my style. So that's why I stuck around with Canon because I, I like the look that it provided. But I could have switched to Sony. Obviously, Sony has, you know, a, a lot of perks. But Canon really... I like the image quality. I like the the colors that it was producing, and just the feel of the look. It's hard to describe, but just the feel of that of what it created really was was good for me at the time. Now I like I had the same feelings for Panasonic. I love the Lumix cameras. I love the feel that they produced in their image. So it really got excited the fact that they fixed the autofocus, and now I can get all the the video features that I need. Right with the S5 Mark II, I don't have to compromise. I don't have to compromise in terms of overheating i don't have to compromise in terms of like um the video video features the ability to, to shoot with uh for example the um, 180 degree shutter man that thing is awesome that thing is absolutely awesome that it's just those little things those little details that allow you to have really just i guess um better quality of experience when you're shooting with the lumix s5 mark ii for video as opposed to the traditional canon cameras that i was shooting with now the third reason why i switched from canon over to panasonic and lumix is pricing 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 now canon is an awesome brand i'm not knocking on canon i'm just saying they're an awesome brand but you also pay a premium to use their equipment whether it's the lenses whether it's the bodies whether it's the accessories no matter what it is you're gonna pay a higher premium for canon product i love the rf mount lenses and i absolutely i personally notice a difference when i shoot with the ef versus the rf the videos that i've shot with the rf mount are a ton sharper I, to me they're a lot sharper and they just look a lot cleaner than the ones for the EF mount. So I love the RF glass, but it's so pricey. It's it's such a pricey lineup. And when it comes to not allowing third-party producers to be able to create lenses for the RF mount, it just makes it harder to bit you where you're basically uh, cornered. You either buy Canon glass or you don't have glass. If you don't want to use the EF glass, you're, you're stuck with buying brand new RF glass. So that's one of, uh, one of the reasons where I'm like, we were spending a lot of money on Canon equipment but really the throttling and the hindrance were really compromising a lot just to stay with Canon. The way that I came across the S5 Mark II is actually I was shopping for a brand new R6 Mark II. Before I switched over, I had the Canon R3 as my A camera and then I had the R6 as my B camera. So whenever I was shooting and had a dual camera set up, I would have the R3 footage, which is just awesome. It's really high quality. Then I would have the R6 footage, which is not bad, but it's not to that same level. So I was trying to match the, those two cameras together and it always it wasn't always perfect you know it was just more work in post-production that I had to do I was looking to get the R6 Mark II but when I was looking at the price point for that R6 Mark II it was at $2,500 now the price point for the Lumix S5 Mark II is like $1,975 right but at that price point the not only is the S5 Mark II cheaper than the R6, but it also gives you like no compromises when it comes to video and you don't really lose in anything when it comes to photo either. So looking at that as I was studying that, I was like, okay, I can either buy the R6 or I can buy the Lumix X5. I was actually initially gonna go buy the Lumix S5 Mark II just to complement my R3, but I decided to just go all in, right? Because the autofocus is fixed, so there's really no reason not to go with the Panasonic. So I sold my setup, and for the price of my R3 alone, I was able to buy two bodies of the Lumix S5 Mark II and a lens, and a prime lens, for the price of the R3 alone. So I sold the rest of my Canon kit, switched it all over to, to, to Lumix. I now have two lenses, the same two lens setup I had with Canon. I now have it in here with, uh, with Panasonic as the 24 to 70 and I also have the 70 to 200 for the price of one camera with Canon I was able to get two bodies and a lens it's just wild that the the cost of having a Canon camera is just so ridiculously high but I, I get it they're quality stuff but I feel like they're not that much better to where it justifies that kind of pricing so now with Lumix obviously with the L mount there's tons of different lenses out there and there's also third-party lenses that we can adapt easily so it's just exciting to be able to have those options again and not really feel cornered by Canon to just buy their products or buy their quality line. So that's it guys. Those are the main reasons why I switched from Canon over to Panasonic with the Lumix line. I'm definitely excited to, to be able to be back with this line because I, like I mentioned earlier, I love the image that 
these things produce. So I'm excited to put it through its paces a little bit more and I'll put out another video here later on um, just to talk about some of my favorite features, some of the things that I like, some of the things that I don't like so far. And I'll have to tell you one thing that I already miss from my Canon R3 is the battery life. <laughs> the battery life, that big battery from the R3 was so good to have, but I get it. Not every camera can hold that that big battery. So I'll figure out a way to be able to, to live without that battery. But other than that, so far, my experience has just been awesome. So we'll talk more about that in a later video. But for today, that's all I had to share. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy.